Let's add an enchantment to our Minecraft mod. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we're back in Telegram once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom enchantment to our Minecraft mod. And it's going to be quite interesting indeed. So, of course, the in 1.21.1 and every subsequent version as well, the enchantment system has completely changed. So that means that we're going to have a few different things that we will need to do. One of the most important ones is that the enchantments are also dependent on data gen. So we will actually need to well, create a custom class that will data gen the JSON files. Now, once again, in theory, you can also write the JSON files manually. That is possible to do. But in our case, we're going to use the data gen. So in the tutorial mode package, we're going to right click new package called enchantment. And inside there, we'll need three Java classes. The first one is going to be the mod mod enchantment effects class. And then I'm going to have another class that is the mod enchantments class. And then in the enchantment package, a new package called custom. And that is where the sort of the functionality goes in. That is another new Java class called the lightning striker enchantment. Uh, I believe that is enchantment effect, actually, uh, because it is now sort of changed. So the actual enchantment itself has a couple of effects that it can trigger, so to speak. And those are basically defined in the lightning striker. That's actually the one we're going to start with as it is the, well, the most interesting, so to speak, or the, it's also the first one that we should start with. First of all, we're going to make this a record and making this a record means that after the name of the record, we have to put in parentheses and then this is going to implement the enchantment, enchantment entity effect interface over here. We're going to hover over this and implement the two methods that we need to implement and then we basically only need one thing, and that is the map codec right here. I'm going to make a public static final map codec of type lightning striker enchantment effect. I'm going to call this the codec or caps, and this is equal to map codec dot unit passing in lightning striker enchantment effect colon colon new, and that is it. Because, well, in this case, the codec itself, there's nothing to basically read out for this enchantment effect. We don't have any anything that we basically need to save inside of it. And then we can literally in the get codec simply return the codec. And then the apply method is that is the method that gets called when this particular effect is basically triggered or well applied in this case. And we'll, literally what we're going to do is we're going to check for the level of the enchantment, right? So the level right here, the integer level is the level of the enchantment. So we're going to say level is equal to one. Then what I want to do is I want to spawn one lightning bolt. So we're going to say entity type dot lightning bolt dot spawn passing in the world over here, passing in user dot get block pause. So in this case, we are going to spawn this uh, at the user's position. So the let's say the bad thing about this is that, well, that means that in theory, uh, the user would get hit and not necessarily, let's say, the entity that was just hit. Uh, however, I am unsure if the pause over here, the VEC3, if that is actually the position that you had just attacked. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. So you could also, in theory, make a new block position using the VEC3D over here as a position. But in our case, we're just going to do that because mainly the reason is I just want to show you how you can actually make an enchantment, any sort of effect that you want to do. Of course, you need to implement that yourself. So in level one, we want to spawn one lightning bolt and then we're just going to duplicate this and say, hey, if the level is two, we're just going to spawn two lightning bolts. Literally, that is going to be our implemented enchantment effect over here and that's going to be fine. And we can actually close this class because we're done with this now, the next one is going to be the mod enchantment effects, because first of all, we need to, well, probably basically get the enchantment effect over here registered. And for this, what we're going to have is a public static void register enchantment effects method over here. And it's going to be tutorial mod logger, of course, once again, that info. And we're just going to say registering mod enchantments, enchantment effects, actually, for... And then, of course, tutorial mod, .mod ID. There we go. And we're going to immediately call this because why not? It's going to be mod enchantments dot enchantment effects once again. So see, even sometimes I, you know, mix them up here in this case. But there you go. That's going to be this one. And then we're going to make a private static map codec. There's going to be a helper method. So there's going to be a private static map codec of type question mark extends enchantment 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 entity effect. Very important. Because in this case, it's going to be an entity effect that we're going to make. Register 
entity effect with a string name parameter and the second one is going to be a map codec of type question mark extends enchantment entity effect again i'm going to call this the codec here as well and there we go and there we have it and then here we're going to return registry making sure we choose net minecraft registry very important dot register not a reference though but just register then we're going to say registry start enchantment entity effect type identifier dot of tutorial mod dot mod id and then passing in the name after the first closing parenthesis passing in the codec and there we go and then we can register the enchantment effect itself public static final map codec of type question mark extends enchantment entity effect lightning underscore striker equal to the register entity effect method lightning underscore lightning underscore this is crazy light ning there you go underscore striker and then we have the lightning striker effect dot codec and there we go this is now registered and we are basically good to go in this case and we can actually also uh, close this particular class the last one is the mod enchantments class which will have a well a very interesting thing and that's going to be first of all a private static void register method this is going to have a registerable reg registerable of type enchantment on this is going to be called the registry and then a register key uh, sorry a registry key of type enchantment i'm going to call this the key and then we have an enchantment dot builder and we're going to call this the builder the method itself very straightforward registry dot register passing in the key and passing in builder dot build and then passing in the key dot get value this is just a helper method here for registering a particular enchantment and the way that the class here is set up is going to be the same way that our trims are set up for example so if we were to once again just take a look at this right because those are also uh, made with a bootstrap method and registrable this is going to be the same idea so we're going to have a public static final registry key of type enchantment this is going to be the lightning underscore striker i don't know why lightning is such a hard word to write right now lightning underscore striker there we go equal to registry key dot of and there's going to be registry keys dot enchantment then we're going to have an identifier dot of tutorial mod dot mod id and the name here is of course once again lightning underscore striker there we have it and then we need a public static void bootstrap method a bootstrap method there you go with a registerable of type enchantment and there's going to be the registerable and then here we need two registry lookups the first one is going to be for the enchantments itself so var enchantments equal to registerable dot get registry lookup registry keys registry keys dot enchantment so that we can reference enchantments and then we're also going to reference items for some reason i don't even know oh i know why okay yeah okay and then var items is going to be registerable dot get registry lookup and this is for registry keys dot item and there we go and now to register a particular enchantment we're going to call the register method passing in the registerable then the lightning striker registry key and then here a builder so enchantment dot builder this time we're using the method passing in enchantment enchantment dot definition so this is basically going to create this and then we need to pass in a couple of things so the first thing is we can actually look into the definition method highly recommended over here or just look at this so you can see the first one here is a registry entry of items which is going to be the supported items we then have some entries here of primary items we have a weight so how often is this going to show up the max level the min and the max cost then we have an anvil cost and lastly what slots this is going to be attributed to so very straightforwardly first of all items dot get or throw we're going to say item tags item tags dot this is going to be weapon enchantable and then this is going to be the second one here is sword enchantable because the swords are basically the primary weapons we then have a weight of five we're going to have a max level of two we're going to have enchantment cost i'm actually going to do it like this it's going to be best enchantment dot leveled cost cost here is base five and let's say uh, per level uh, seven or something like that and then the, this is the minimum cost and then we have enchantment dot leveled cost of let's say a 25 and a i don't know like a, a nine once again when it comes to any of the numbers highly recommended to just play around with those as always we then have an anvil cost of two and lastly an attribute modifier slot of the main hand we can then pass go well in theory we can just leave it like this however i'm not quite done just yet because we need to add the effect because right now this would be 
created, but there's no effect in there yet. So what we can do after the second closing parentheses here is we can call a bunch of methods. So there can be an exclusive set over here. Now, in our case, I want to make an exclusive set with enchantments dot get or throw enchantment tags dot and that's going to be damage exclusive set meaning that if i have a i don't even know exactly which ones are in here but of course there are some enchantments that when you have a i think it's something like if you have a smite enchantment you can have like a, a bane of arthropods enchantment or something like that right and this is basically what this shows right so the damage exclusive set means that you can only have certain enchantments with other enchantments and you basically have to say hey this is the exclusive set that we can't have it with. Uh, highly recommended to also always go into the classes, look at vanilla to um, basically see and look at what they do as well. After the, once again, the second closing parenthesis here, we're going to then add the effect. This is going to be an enchantment, enchantment effect component types dot post attack. The target is going to be, or we're going to pass in the attacker as a target. Then we're going to pass in the victim as a target. And then we can say, new lightning striker enchantment effect and all of a sudden we have finally have made it and this is basically the highest level overview all of the different things that the enchantment does this here basically determines how the json file looks like that is going to be generated in just a second via data gen of course and there we go so what we can then do in the tutorial mode generator down here in the build registry we can say registry builder dot add registry registry keys dot enchantment mod enchantments colon colon bootstrap and then in the data gen, instead of the mod registry data generator over here, we want to do entries.addall, registries.get or uh, get or throw wrapper, registry keys.enchantment, and there we go. The last thing to do is to go to our tutorial mod assets folder and add the translation. There we have it, enchantment.tutorialmod.lightningstriker, and the different levels will automatically just add a one, two, and so on and so forth in the books themselves all right so let's go to data gen and let the data gen run through and then we can actually also take a look at the json file that is being generated and there we have it one json file written and we can take a look this is under enchantment lightning underscore striker and you can see that this is basically all of the things that we have defined right there so pretty cool all things considered like i said yes this json file you can also in theory make this yourself and just uh, basically get the enchantment effect itself registered but once again, I am using DataGen for almost everything. So that's why I'm basically showing this. Also, the JSON file get quite complicated if you want to add multiple different things. So there you go. And one last thing to do is we want to navigate down to our resources data Minecraft tags. And here we want to make a new folder called enchantment. Enchantment, yes. And then here a new JSON file. I'm going to call this the in underscore enchanting. No, in underscore enchanting underscore table dot json now this is going to look kind of like this really straightforward tutorial mod colon lightning striker of course the name here given to the name of the registry key right here and of course if we do not have this particular json file well then our custom enchantment is not actually going to show up in the enchanting table so very important that we do this and once we have this let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft. And let's first of all take a look if we can't find the Lightning Striker. And you can see, of course, it exists as Enchanted Books already. And if I were to go in here, then let's take a look. Okay, we didn't get it right there. Let's see. Still didn't get it. Let's get a couple more swords, I guess. That would not be the worst idea in the world. And then let's just see if we can get it. And sometimes, of course, there it is. Okay, Lightning Striker 2. Sometimes, of course, it takes a while because it is a random, but... There we freaking go, right? And then if we do this over here with... Uh, this is a... Oh, Bane of the Anthropod. Okay, there you go. And what we can actually see, if we actually take a look at this, it actually does not go for the user, right? So, um, as I said before, in the striker effect over here, we have the entity user. Well, apparently, the user for a post attack is actually not the person swinging the sword, but rather the person receiving the blow. Which, of course, is exactly what we want. And that is a custom enchantment add it to minecraft awesome as always all of the code is available down below but that's gonna be it for this tutorial right here next time in this video we'll talk about a custom crop block hope to see you there so yeah